Good evening and welcome to St. Agnes. Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings for today's liturgy can be found in the back of the hymnal at number 1158, number 1158. Our entrance hymn is number 832, We Come With Joy in Jesus Christ, number 832. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal-shalisha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, how can I set this before a 100 people? Elisha insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called 
to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said thus to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord.
beloved brothers and sisters, today's readings mark the beginning of the Eucharistic discourse or Jesus' teaching about the bread of life, which we are going to hear for a number of Sundays. It is beautiful that we start the foundation of this teaching today on the bread of life just a week after the Eucharistic Congress we had last weekend in Indianapolis. Although the readings talk about the miracle of the multiplication of loaves, we see that miracle in the first reading, and we see the same miracle taking place in the Gospel. Although the two readings focus on the multiplication of loaves, I would not like to talk about the multiplication of loaves, but I would like us to focus on a particular character, one of the persons that was present at that multiplication of loaves. And this person became so indispensable after his contribution. This person is the little boy. There is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. That was Andrew's answer to Jesus Christ. Where was the boy? Was he moving with the crowd? Or he was found on that mountain that Jesus was? Was that his village? If he comes from the crowd that followed Jesus, then that shows a high level of preparation. Imagine a crowd of 5,000 people. Among them were women with children and men and young people. Imagine that crowd going for a journey and people, all those people, nobody had food. Maybe the women that had children, they were not moving with food for those children to eat. But the only person who had food was this small boy. But this little boy had some food with him that could not, he did not intend to survive the crowd. He might have carried that food thinking just of his stomach. And imagine maybe his friends telling him he's a foodie because he's thinking just about his stomach. Why is he carrying food and climbing up the mountain? He will get tired. Maybe while moving with the bag of food, he asks a friend to help. And the friend says, no, I'm not going to help because the distance is long. But this was the same food that came to rescue the crowd. Come to think of it, was this small boy an angel? The name of the boy is not giving, given in the gospel. The reading does not tell us if this boy was one among those from the crowd or he was originally from that place. All we know is that there is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. Think about Abraham going to sacrifice his son Isaac. The son said, Father, I can see the knife, I can see the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? But Abraham replied to this young boy, the Lord will provide. We are told that before Jesus asked Philip where they can get enough food to feed the crowd, he knew, of course, what he was going to do. But was Jesus aware of this little boy in the crowd? Taking the five valley loaves from this boy and the two fish, was that exactly what Christ wanted to do? Or it is a different thing that he wanted to do and decided to use another means? Could it be said that this boy is the image of God providing for his son as the point of sacrifice for the people. 
Since these five barley loaves of fish and two, two barley loaves of bread and two fish is a kind of like prefiguration of the bread of life that Jesus is going to give his apostles on the Last Supper. And it also prefigured or prefigured the sacrifice that Christ was going to make on the cross by giving out his body and blood to the whole of humankind as food and drink. So, does it mean this was exactly his plan? We come to see the importance of this boy. He took food for himself, but there was no way he could eat that food in hiding. Probably he was already hungry, but he started thinking on how he was going to eat this food with many people here who are also hungry. And so he decided to offer that food to the Lord so that he might give to the rest of the people. For this boy to have been able to offer what he had for the good of the crowd shows a high level of charity. It is a symbol of one who lives for the people. It is a symbol of one who is selfless, one who is ready to give himself out of love for his own people. And that is what St. Paul tells us in the second reading. The vocation of this little boy is to be charitable. St. Paul reminds us to lead a life worthy of our calling, to be charitable to one another, and to be able to bear with one another in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. He did not hide to eat his food alone. Rather, the young boy offered all the food to the people. He did not think about himself, neither did he hide. Rather, he was ready to suffer of hunger for the people because giving the food, he did not say, what am I going to have in return? Some people have said that this little boy is the patron saint of those who give out of charity, even when they have just a little. From this boy, we learned that true charity is not measured by the quantity of things we give out, but it is measured from the heart that offers that gift. There is always an act of the will for man, and then a symbol of gratitude from the Lord himself. This boy did his act of sacrifice by giving what he had to the Lord. And the Lord Jesus showed gratitude, not just to the boy, but to the entire community by taking that and giving to them so that all of them might be satisfied. Although the Lord Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do, he did not refuse the offering of this little boy. He rather used it for the well-being of the crowd. Why the Lord Jesus had the power to make bread out of nothing, he did not make food out of nothing and give the people. He decided to use what comes from human hands. No matter how little it was, he did not decide to provide or to make a factory of food, but he gave just what he received from the little boy. When we lift up what we have as food for the good of the community, the Lord Jesus in turn will bless not only the one who gives, but he will bless everyone. But we make, we may ask, ourselves, what did this boy receive in return? When he gave the five barley loaves and two fish, what did he receive? Did he even receive the 200 days wages that Philip thought they could use to buy food for the people? 
he did not. But there is one thing he received. First of all, he participated in the food that the Lord multiplied, which means he ate also to the field. And there is a second thing, which was the best gift he could ever receive in return. This was his reward in heaven. We know, of course, that the Beatitude says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This boy, because of his purity of heart and mind, eventually saw God. Where can we buy enough food for the crowd? There are many people today who are hungry. There are many people that we can look with pity and we ask like Jesus, where can we have enough food for them? But we can stand either in the position of Philip or in the position of Andrew. If we are Philip, we will say 200 days wages will not be enough for these people. We know of people who are hungry that even our own wages cannot do anything to them. But if we take to be like Andrew, we, of course, know people who have a little, and we will say to Jesus, there is a little boy here with not five barley loaves and two fish, but maybe just with one dollar. There is a little boy among us. We know that little boy. We can spot that little boy out and tell Jesus there is a little boy here. And through that one dollar, it can help to save not just a family, but it can save nations. Of course, when we are moving out of the door of the church, I see everywhere there, there are poor, box, or poor boxes at various doors of the church. Sometimes just a dollar in that poor box is going to help not a family, it's going to help not an individual, but it is going to help a, an entire nation that is the little boy's offer. When we come to church, maybe we think about those who are suffering, those who are in crisis. Just one Hail Mary is enough to feed that person's soul. We think about those who are in the hospital. Last week, I was at the nursing home. I saw people who are sick, people who have been there for years, and some who are there for days. Those people might not have the joy that we are having. They might not be able to move in places to rejoice as we are rejoicing, but they need our prayer. If we can only say, we do not have five barley loaves and two fish, but all I have is to say one Hail Mary. That will be enough for Christ to multiply it. Christ will not only give the reward to those people whom you are praying for by healing them, but he is going to give you also graces and also give your family graces. And so, dear brothers and sisters, if like Philip, you do not know where to get the loaves to offer God, turn to Andrew and he will tell you, there is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. Take that and give Jesus and the Lord who is God of the harvest, will multiply it for the satisfaction of everyone. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was born of a virgin. Amen. For our 
our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge, living in the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Dear Lord Jesus, you said that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you would be in their midst and hear our prayers. With this confidence, we offer these petitions. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Berbich, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, especially Ukraine and the Middle East, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, diplomatic and intelligence services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith. And for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Israelite hostages and all the innocent victims of war, terrorism, and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the drought and the blessing of rain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us and for our parish seminarians, Gabriel Gode, Michael Gibbons, John Anthony Bono, and Andrew Garcia, for Sister Monica Baptista Whelan and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, whose will who will be professing their first vows on August 10th as Dominican sisters in Nashville, and for Joanna Shaw, postulant for the Carmelites in Port Tobacco, Maryland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially Father Pinazotto, Alice Paxton, and John Toey, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. For Felipe Ordones Jr., for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear all our prayers, even those prayers held within our hearts, and to grant them in accord with thy divine will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In calling upon the prayers of our Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 830, Lord Christ, the people flocked to you, number 830. 
Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. And the praise and glory of his name, our good of all holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs>
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let Christ. us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Just a couple of announcements. Our poor box collection this weekend is for Agape, an organization that helps mothers in need have their babies. On Friday, we will have the Latin Mass offered at 7 p.m. Registration for religious education is now open. Please see the bulletin or the website for details. If anyone is interested in teaching or serving as a classroom aide, please contact Lisa Rosa at the parish office. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we only say. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 637. Now thank we all our God, number 637. Mm -hmm. 